Me and some of my friends from school have started a metal band and we have been wondering how we get gigs with our genre. Love your videos, by the way. Greetings from West Sussex, UK. Wow, West Sussex. What a beautiful part of the world. Um, that, that, is, that is gorgeous. Um, That's when the sun shines every, you know. Once, once every, every three or four years. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I'm English, so. <laughs> We, it gets announced in uh, the BBC. They have like a you know news flash, yellow light emitting from skies called sun. Um, trust me, it's that thing between the rain. Um, no, I, <laughs> no, West Sussex is really beautiful. Um, wow, you know I don't. You'd have to know the town and the area. I think for you, West Sussex is probably for you know depending on where you are, it's probably forty-five minutes to an hour, possibly an hour and a half drive into London. Um, there's going to be a heck of a lot more, um, you know, shows in London. Sure. Um, but if they're high school kids, I mean, like, aren't there local talent shows or community centers, that kind of thing? If they're in schools, I mean, for me, when I was at school, school, like, kid, you know, pre-16 and 15, 16 years old when I first started playing, we would play in uh, recreational centers. Like, there's, you know, anywhere that there was a pub that had a, um, a, a little room at the back so you'd, you'd enter you couldn't go through the pub you wrap around the back and they'd have local kids playing in bands they'd even let them rehearse oh I that's mean, cool wow schools themselves have you know yeah. like little rooms and halls that you can rent out and play in house parties house parties that'd be a good way you know any 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 gig is a good gig when you're just starting out you need time to develop and be bad before you can be good I think the one thing you're gonna have to re if you can re research this one thing and figure it out if you can find yourself a little vocal PA with a monitor, you can find somebody locally that just has a couple of 112 with the, you know speakers with some horns on it and then some way of monitoring so you can hear yourself. If you can at least find that, then you can go and play anywhere. You can do the house parties. You just gotta turn up with a, a basic vocal monitoring PA that you can hear yourself from. There we go. Okay, good luck to you. How do we get started getting a job in music production after college? I'm a senior in high school interested into getting into this field. Tailor made for this guy. Wow. So, I mean, I, my my methodology was quite different, but then I have lots of friends that have three or four different ways of doing it. I think ultimately, for me, I was a musician in a band who ended up, but I always had um, four-track cassette players, you name it. I was always recording and writing and demoing my band songs and my songs. So I learned that way. I didn't go to school for it. Uh -huh. However, I live in Los Angeles, and nearly every person I know here maybe is a musician, but that's secondary. Most of them here started, either went to music school or didn't, but they always started as interns in recording studios. So depending where you're at, that's what I would do. I would go to a local recording studio, wherever you're based, and intern, and work your ass off, and be prepared to be there illegally 15 to 18 hours a day. It's just, that's what happens. You get in there, you sweep the floors, occasionally, Eric, uh, you sweep the floors and <laughs> Make coffee. Make coffee, plug in cables. Yeah, yeah. Look over this guy's shoulder saying, how'd you do that? Yeah, you know? and fuck up time tracks. Yeah. Eric. <clears throat> and, uh, you know, all of that kind of stuff. I mean, the reality is, is you just need to get in the thick of it. Yep. You need to get your face in there. And like I was saying, um, you know. And on, don't, be, don't complain about it either. Yeah, like I was saying, I was like the lowest on the totem pole. Um, and my first big session was because all the owners of the studios, which were all producers and engineers, ha were in a band together, went off on the road, they got a call for a big gig, and there I am, like, knowing nothing about anything, working with Pink Floyd's producer and engineer, and David Bowie's bass player, at wow. 21 years old and having no idea what I'm doing. So, but that's because I was around, I was available, and they could trust me, and they liked me enough that when they had a gig came in, a big one, they were like, oh, maybe Warren will be able to do this. You make your own luck. Hey guys, just gonna break in for a second here and let you know that Warren's got a new lesson out. It's called Mixing Classic Rock. You get all the tracks and he takes you through the entire mix process step by step and shows you how to get an awesome mix in the box with affordable gear and not use any drum samples at all. It's really awesome. You can check it out on Pro Mix Academy. The link's in the description below. And it's also part of a much larger package called the Ultimate Rock Mixing Bundle that has his lesson, the Motorhead stuff, the Galacticon stuff, and my lesson as well. You can check them all out at ProMixAcademy.com. Once again, link's in the description below. And back to the show. Hey Glenn, if you met a genie and he gave you three wishes for the music industry to have come true and stay forever, what would they be? Okay, first one would be... Um, have all mixers and mice have electroshock on there so when you go to use auto-tune that's what it does 
You wanted a Glenn answer, you got a Glenn answer. If I could change one thing about the music industry the way it is now, is make it all entirely performance based. Okay. That'd be nice. Just performance based. It doesn't matter what the genre is. It could be EDM, it could be metal, it could be country. Just make it about performances. Like, get you in a room, go back to that reality when everybody was in a room recording together. They could be programming and stuff. Because I think if you could bring that humanity back, I think that's what's sorely missing. Sure. I think the other thing I would do, honestly, isn't even a studio thing. It would be um, change the ticketing system so you know every day I, people could get access to concert tickets and go to the shows they want to see instead of having them all bought up by bots and then having to. That's pay the, the that's notes. the best answer of all three. I agree. I mean, how many times have you want to go to a great big show? Yeah. And it's it's an hour after tickets on sale, and it's fifteen hundred dollars to get within a hundred and fifty feet of the stage. Yeah, it's fucking insane. Because it's all bought. Yeah. By God, I, I got to tell you something really contentious. I, I found out that there's a couple of some of the biggest managers also own the scalpers. Oh, yeah. So you've got all these double dippers. You've got people that manage artists, of course. that own scalping companies, all this kind of stuff. It's all fucking rigged. <laughs> it kind of is. Everybody's double dipping and quadruple dipping. Yeah, that, that makes sense. Do you remember the old days when you and I were kids where you used to stand in a line at a box office to buy a ticket? Oh, yeah. I know it's a pain in the butt, but I wish there was a way we could reintroduce that. Sure. That was the best answer. Yeah, okay. Anyway, moving on. It's a beautiful rig, but for nearly two and a half grand, I can't see myself being able to get anywhere near it for a long time. Kids tend to thin out the wall a bit. Any tips for decent gear at a somewhat cheaper price point? Yeah, a box of condoms. <laughs> Father of two. <laughs> Father of two. Hey, Glenn, love the show. Have you ever recorded a band in a situation where they all play simultaneously? Just wondered, when my last band recorded our EP, we rehearsed our asses off and played our whole EP live, with the only punch-ins being the guitar solos and the second vocal track. Is this way out of norm, or are we just a freak band who rehearsed our asses off? Oh, you know what? That's awesome. Good for you guys. You know what? You guys are doing it right. That's that's the best freaking question ever, after the answer from a little bit ago. Yeah, that's the way I made every single record as a kid, whether as an artist or as a producer or an engineer. That's the way it used to be. Yeah, exactly. Every I like, album. You go put on those old Beatle records, that's that's those guys just playing their asses off. But even like Floyd, even later period great rock bands, they all go in a room, they played together, and then yeah, you'd fix things. So you know, I'd come in and listen back, and the producer would be like, "Hey Warren, you're you a little might want to punch in a little punch bit, punch in a little bit." But the groove, the actual feel of the song, was everybody in a room, and that's why great music was so great because it was people making music together. I was talking about this with a drummer the other day. I don't remember ever thinking that the drummer was wrong. I just didn't. I mean, no. if I was behind or in front of the kick. Mm -hmm. Then I had to lay back or move forward, whatever yeah. it was, to fit with the drummer. Nobody ever questioned the drummer. No. That was the feel of your band. Your drummer kind of rushed, but that was cool. Can you mm -hmm. imagine trying to edit Keith Moon's? Keith oh. Moon, I mean, you know. Oh, it would just kill, kill it. And that, that's, what, that's, the thing why, that's why, you know, I, a lot of you guys will watch my show and say, oh, well, the drums aren't perfect. You know, it's like, good, they're not supposed to be. That's called humanity. Let's bring that back. I got a much larger video coming up on that right. where I ask, you know, what the hell happened to the drummer in heavy rock? But that's going to be coming up pretty soon if it's not released already. Marvelous. But damn good question. Very good. And yes, you guys are doing it right. Keep doing it right. Glenn, just got my 802 and a couple of SM57 mics. Recorded my cousin using your techniques, and the sound was completely awesome. Thanks for the tip. P.S. Fuck you. That is amazing. Oh, I love hearing from you guys that you're taking my advice and it's working for you. That makes my day. I love hearing all that sort of thing. And yeah, if you want to get some more in-depth into that kind of thing, I definitely recommend checking out um, the Galacticon lesson with Ulrich Weld because we're just basically using the technique that Ulrich came up with and it was absolutely brilliant. So definitely check that out. I'll put a link to that lesson in the description below. You can check that out. It's uh, Brendan Small from Death Clock, uh, the TV show Metalocalypse. He did all that stuff. That's his own solo thing, Galacticon. Really cool stuff. Check it's it out. Amazing. I respect you very much, but I honestly don't agree with his pitch correction is awful circle jerk. It's a tool. If it didn't exist, neither would some of the most of the greatest songs ever recorded. <laughs> 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 Auto tune, greatest songs ever recording. <sighs> Are you a fucking moron? <laughs> the fuck is wrong with you? Did your mother drop you on your head? Are you a bass player? All right, that's it for this week. Thanks so much for watching. Thanks to my special guest, Mr. Warren Hewitt. We'll see you guys next time. Uh, in the meantime, yeah, remember. A marvelous time recording and mixing. Yeah, and stay, away the, stay the hell away from Auto tune. Good way to fuck up your record. <laughs>